Hi everyone. Welcome to another episode of Tribal Electric Tuesdays, where we dive into the technique of separating botanical particles using static electricity. If you're curious about this topic, keep watching. By now you may have given up on pipes, but we're not quite there yet. There are ways to make it work. Electrostatic literature broadly discusses the use of tubes to charge particles. In the previous episode, we discussed rigid pipes, which present many challenges such as agglomeration and some limitations such as pipe length. We easily overcame the length issue by coiling the pipe, since we can have a long pipe trajectory and a small footprint. We're still not certain what is the ideal length to charge particles as much as possible. However, I was able to charge particles to 5 kV quite easily and quickly. The lesson learned is that so long as you have sufficient tube length, excess tubing is probably not detrimental. The next challenge we discussed with pipes was material selection. If metal pipes are off the table as previously discussed, plastics seem to be the way to go. Research is open as to whether in fact the material selection matters. Personally, I don't think it does in this application. Our tests indicate the charge of particles was influenced more by other factors than by tubing material used. The triboelectric series would contradict my statement, but if material selection does play a role, it's marginal at best. Research is also inconclusive whether the surface roughness of the tube plays a significant role. I believe roughness plays a role, however marginal. The reason being is that a rough surface would catch particles and perhaps spin them to a certain degree and promote particle collision, which is broadly believed to be a major factor in charging particles. Surely there are limits to this. As if the tubing is too rough, as in metal tubes, I can see how that would damage particles. It could create fines, and in our case cause sticky resin to coat the pipe and create agglomeration and accumulation of particles in the pipe. The next challenge is particle velocity. We must get particles to travel along the pipe and interact with each other to charge. We found it impractical to have particles free fall within the tube because the pipe inlet would be too high. This brings us back to the initial issue with pipe length. The solution is to accelerate the particles using some sort of compressed gas. Given the influence of moisture on the ability of particles to charge, we'll discuss this later. We're forced to use an inert gas like nitrogen or CO2 or a dry gas. What role do these gases play in the particle's ability to charge? This is something we haven't tested yet. Do you have any experience using these gases? Ultimately, we were successful using dry compressed air. This solves the humidity issue, is inexpensive and safe. So now we have a method to accelerate particles by pushing them through a curved tube so they may collide with each other and triboelectrically charge. Since particle velocity is so important, then the pipe diameter must also be carefully selected since they're both related. A small diameter pipe with lots of air may cause such strong particle impact that they may explode and cause agglomeration or accumulation on pipes. The greater pipe diameter, the greater the CFM of air that is required to accelerate the particles within the tube. If we do not have enough airflow, particles will settle due to low particle velocity. If we have too much air volume, this will cause issues in downstream processes as you will soon find out. Initially, my intuition was to feed the particles in a downward spiral trajectory so we could use gravity to assist and reduce required air volume and particle velocity. The only downside I could imagine was the height requirement of the feed location. At this scale, this was manageable. To my surprise, I noticed that particles tended to accumulate on the pipe walls when following a downward trajectory. The remedy was simple and effective. Feed the particles from the bottom of the tube and push the particles upward. From observation, I believe gravity actually helps in this process as particles try to settle and come down. The high-speed air pushes particles up in a chaotic fashion. As stated earlier, the results were amazing. We generated 5,000 volts on particles that normally have little charge. This was truly an exciting moment in the development of the method. The next challenge with the method is feeding the powder into the pipe. What do you think we should try? In conclusion, we're satisfied with a coiled tube given the design we envision, which is a small machine for a small lab. However, this approach is also easily scalable. This is definitely not the only way to do this and can think of other ways to turbocharge particles, but this moves us closer to the prototype. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. 
If you found this video entertaining and you learned something today, please consider supporting us by clicking this button here. Much appreciated. I'd like to know if you have experience or ideas about this process. If so, please share in the comments below. Thanks for watching.